After discussing the causes, pathophysiology and investigations of choice in oligohydramnios, now we are going to discuss its management. In the top right corner of this video, you can find the links of videos related to oligohydramnios. In order to manage a case of oligohydramnios, the first step is patient's counseling. Okay, so we need to counsel the patient regarding the diagnosis and the possible fetal maternal complications. Second step, divide oligohydramnios into mild, moderate and severe types for further management. So what is mild oligohydramnios? Mild oligohydramnios is the one in which AFI is 5 to 8 cm. In moderate oligohydramnios, the AFI is 2 to 5 cm and when AFI is less than 2 cm that is called severe oligohydramnios. So what are the possible complications of oligohydramnios? We have certain maternal complications and certain fetal complications. The maternal complications include increased risk of induction of labor and the risk associated with that which are failed IOL instrumental vaginal delivery and cesarean section what are the fetal complications the possible fetal complications include the preterm delivery intrauterine growth retardation unexplained intrauterine death after 38 weeks of gestation if the patient is diagnosed with mild oligohydramnios which mean the afi between 5 to 8 centimeter then we will go for conservative management but along with the conservative management, we will call the patient for regular antenatal visits on a weekly basis. And in each visit, we need to inquire about the fetal movements. We will do the uh, proper examination to check the liquor volume and fetal size. Also do obstetrical ultrasound and biophysical profile on a weekly basis and do the growth scan after every two to three weeks. Next, we will advise the patient to drink plenty of water as it increases AFI by 2 to 4 cm. In fact, 2 to 2 liter per day of water intake in a week will increase AFI by 2 to 4 cm. So, intake of water is very important. Next, we will consider steroid cover. Injection steroid in the form of DAXA or beta methasone is given between 28 to 36 weeks of gestation for fetal lung maturity as there is increased risk of preterm delivery. In the presence of complications, we will consider early delivery. But in the absence of any added complications, pregnancy would be taken to term and induction of the labor would be planned at 38 weeks to prevent the unexplained intrauterine death after 38 weeks of gestation. So this is how we will manage a case of mild oligohydramnios. How to manage a case of moderate to severe oligohydramnios by moderate oligohydramnios we mean the AFI between 2 to 5 cm and when AFI is less than 2 cm that is called the severe oligohydramnios in such cases we will provide the same management as we did in the mild oligohydramnios but patient needs to be admitted till delivery for inpatient fetal monitoring so the first step is patient's admission to the hospital secondly propped up position then we should consider analgesia if required. Then daily FKCC, the fetal kick count chart for assessment of the fetal moments. Next, twice daily fetal heart sound auscultation. Next comes twice weekly by physical profile plus AFI. Next, the growth scans two to three weekly. Next comes the IV fluids. Like infusion ringer lactate drip of 1 liter is given IV once daily or BD. Next comes the role of steroid cover for fetal lungs maturity. And after 38 weeks of gestation, we should consider induction of the labor in such case. So that was all about the possible complications and the management of a case of oligohydramnios. I would like to complete my presentation with this quote. And that is... 
the difference between possible and impossible lies in a person's determination. Okay, thank you so much. Wish you best of luck. Allah Hafiz.